It's the middle of winter, yet the sun is shining, so we decide to head south into the mountains to take the Opus OP2 camper trail on its maiden voyage. It's absolutely freezing, but that doesn't stop us from testing the patrol and the OP2's capabilities on some pretty sketchy tracks and committing to an incredible canyon walk, which really seemed easier in our heads with a baby on our backs. And as always, we throw in a below freezing river swim, cook up some delicious food by the fire and enjoy every single minute of the adventure. Don't go anywhere, adventure awaits. Proudly supported by Ultimate Nine, Tread, Opus Campers, Superior Engineering, and in part by. Middle of winter, out in the mountains, it is fairly bloody cold and more rugged up here in jackets and that, and there's a bit of a breeze today too. But we are out in Nunes State Forest, just outside of Lithgow. We've got the Opus OP2, brand new camper trailer uh, that Opus have lent us after they gave away the last one. So this is the new one we're gonna be trying out. I'll run through it a bit later. And the GQ, Demi, myself and Zeph, and we're out this area, the back of Sydney for the next oh, five or six days exploring, exploring, full driving, camping, all that stuff. We're going to camp at like 1.30 last night, so we are a little bit worn out today, but we've had some quick brekkie, packed up, we're going to head off for an explore. I've got a few cool things we're going to check out today. First destination we're going today is Ali Bubba's cave. I came here maybe three or four years ago with Dad. I was in the nav here, I was in the MUX, but I've heard it's changed a lot since then. So I'm keen to check it out, and Demi's never been here as well. It's a very steep drop down, super cool view all around you. You head down into the valley and where this cave is. So we drop down the side of that hill there, and then this is the bottom section, which is just a mess. It's definitely pretty washed out down here now. <laughs> no one's been on it for a little while. You want to give it a crack? We should be able to bang our way down here. here Ali Baba's cave that's what's marked onto my map anyway I think it does have another name but I forget what it's called yeah pretty incredible spot no one down here to be expected no one else is silly enough to try and drive down all that stuff people do camp here it's a pretty awesome spot to camp in under this cave and you know if you're in here in the rain or something good protection don't know about getting back out in the rain obviously we can't though because we've got the opus back up there we're not bringing that down here we'll hang here and check it out for a little bit and then we have to get back out of here Demi's just driving back to the bottom of this big rock garden here. I don't think she's going to have a go at it, but look how overgrown it is in here, though. Yeah. Nothing but well, you're pretty much just flattening bushes on the track. Obviously, it does not get much use down here. Alrighty, let's see how we go. Getting back up here. A little bit nervous about this. Biggest challenge is going to be just trying to get your lines. Didn't even 
didn't get to the step. <laughs> got caught out on this, all these uh, rocks at the bottom here. It has landed the rear diff right on the middle of a rock, high sand itself, and it won't let me go forwards or backwards. Just digging the tires into the ground. So I'll have to winch out this, and then we'll try the main one. You know what though? Perfect opportunity to try out my new recovery bag. Chaos recovery bag. Got she's, everything you need. She's in action already. First first day on the first trip of testing it out. Imagine if we didn't have this. We'd be screwed. So I need a soft shackle. Yep. And a tree trunk protector. And we're good. Didn't look nice. Back with the chaos recovery gear. made it. That was fairly intense even on the winch. It was like lifting wheels and trying to kick me and that. Yeah, safer, easier, quicker just to grab the winch and you sat to get us up here. We got it. We're on our own. It's a family. Zef's very tired as well. He's had enough. So we're trying to do this to a screaming baby. But now we're up this we can put him in the car and drive and he can have a nap in there. We head to our next one. Off that track it was about 2 30 by the time we came off and then we're like oh what should we do now we're both exhausted after getting here at, yeah 1 30 last night so like oh we'll just pop back to camp and remove the trailer where we had it before was kind of on the edge of a main road a bit so we just we didn't pack it all up we just deflated it um, and then moved it down and we got this nice spot in the bush here we'll get it set up get a fire going and just chill for a little while enjoy this afternoon That's our little camp set up. So beautiful out here in this afternoon sun coming through. Just having a little bit of afternoon tea, but I reckon we might light this fire now because it's getting quite cold. No wonder people in Bones rented lighters. It must be like her hair. Tell no, no, I will conquer it all.
is a lot. You know what Brody Moss says? We've got fire, baby. Same level of enthusiasm as well. This fire pit table is very handy when you have a baby around. Obviously you still have to watch him as you can see, but he at least can't just like run up and fall in the fire or, you know, put his whole body in. You just have to watch his hands reaching in there. Before that sun disappears and it gets too cold, we'll do a quick run through of the new Opus setup we had. So we had the OP4 before, this is the OP2. It's not necessarily a newer model, just a different model. So the OP2 meaning two person setup and the OP4 is a four person setup. Very quick run through. So same as the OP4, we got fridge and then slide out pantry there. You pull out kitchen here, which you've got your four burner gas cooker. And this is your control panel. So this is like updated from the OP4 we had, just a bit of a different layout and that. But that's your air pump where you turn it on to pump it up. Power, fridge, socket, your two water tanks. So it's got two water tanks on it. Lights, water, media. Now because it's OP2 and it's only got one bed inside, I'll show that a bit later, but the whole thing's a bit smaller. So this doesn't, not like a whole thing that folds out. You don't need all that space there for this extra bed support, which means you got a six storage space in there, which we already love because you can put so much stuff in there. And you don't have to put the wheel down when you pop it out. So this whole thing is literally that quick to set up and pack up, it's crazy. This is your shower here. A couple of slide out tables there where you can store stuff. Two gas bottles in there, which is obviously for cooking and the hot water system and that. We got 20 litres of water over that side and we got 20 litres of diesel over that side, which is to fill up that. And that silver container has diesel in it for the diesel heater. So there's a diesel heater inside, which you turn on, keeps it very nice and warm in there, which is absolutely amazing in winter when you're out here in the freezing cold mountains. And we have a baby we have to keep warm, so that's the that's, excuse. That's the, reason. that's the reason why. It's still camping, guys. Yeah. And then inside, this is obviously one of the big differences with the OP2, just being the two person one. We got the big, is that a king or a queen bed? It feels like a king. It was maybe it a king bed. Bloody luscious last night. And then where Demi's standing is all your couch and seating arrangement. Down there, you got radio. That's where you turn the diesel heater on. You got lighting all <laughs> along the floor on the roof and then under this couch cushion is where all your dual battery system is so it's got 200 amp hour lithiums it's an awesome setup this is our first trip using it but we're already loving it so far we have the annex for it at home which you connect there and that pumps up too which gives a whole cover over this we're like oh we'll just try it out just the basic thing like that and we've got an awning on the gq if we need a bit of protection out here while we're cooking or something but it's just honestly so quick and easy to set up and pack up, especially without the annex. We just gave the OP4 away that we had. One very lucky winner. But the reason we went the OP2 is just a bit smaller and lighter overall, quicker and easy to set up and pack up. And when we take the whole family, the kids normally stay out there in swags anyway, out in the wild. And this sort of offers more storage space in it as well. But we're gonna sit out here now and continue enjoying this afternoon. It's absolutely beautiful out this Lithgow area. And what I love about this place is there's so many camps out here and so many tracks as well. So you can just find your own slice of paradise out here in the bush. What do you reckon we cook up some dinner soon? Sit by the fire? Let's have a drink. A drink, sounds like a good plan. Guess it's time I wake up, this is seven years old. We've been seven years cold and now it's time for summer. Walls came down, walls that were holding us. In. They've been holding us in the fire. 
We're gonna cook some chicken pesto pizza on the fire for dinner tonight. So we got the chicken cooking now, and I'll put some pesto in. Zef's having a taste test of the chicken pesto. Hey Zef, how is it? We've got some baby spinach and basil, cherry tomatoes, some bocconcini, and then our pesto chicken. Try and spread that around. Into the pizza oven. What temperature is it on? 280. Sheesh. It's going to be a fast cooking pizza. Oh, 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 damn, surely that's ready. Surely. Damn, that looks good. That's the first pizza ready. What do you reckon, Zef? Look good? We've cranked the diesel heater up, moved into the Opus, and that's us done for the day. We're gonna enjoy a pizza in here, day one of our adventure. Finished, uh, we'll check back in the morning. Not sure what our plans are yet. I think we're gonna go do doesn't really matter. No. They'll see it when they see it. It's the next morning and we drove maybe about half an hour from camp out the back of that Newton State Forest out on the edge of Woolmar National Park. And we are doing the, can I think of the name? The Deep Pass Canyon Walk. That's it. I've done this once before. Bloody spectacular walk through a canyon here, up a river, waterfalls, creeks, rocks, you name it, it's got it. The only thing is, don't know how baby friendly it is from memory, but we'll give it a crack anyway. We'll turn around if we can't get through. We're not turning around, banging it through. The track is very overgrown in the start of it. So you may be out here if you're doing the walk thinking, hmm, what am I doing? But that's just what it is. Fern bashing. This is where it starts to get cool. And see like these caves, another big cave up there. And you got these rock face walls all around you. But the best bit is yet to come. Da -da -da -da. Jurassic Park jungle. This must have been like on Jurassic Park. Hiking shoes safety. Crocs recommended for this walk in sports mode. <laughs> sports mode only. Oh my god, my feet are frozen. <laughs> it's like next level cold. You can nearly feel it in your brain. Oh, <laughs> I feel like I have a brain brain freeze. Oh my god. It's so nice in here though. Wow, big caves. Wow. Look how we got to get up, but it's so nice out here. This place is just absolutely, well, Zeph's trying to get in. And it's just an incredible place. This is one of those things you really got to do. But we got to get up that now. I've got to like a carrier, so I'll probably put Zeph on my back and then, yeah, just make my way up around there. I'm just doing a little pre-check of it all, going for a climb myself before I come up here, Zeph, making sure all the ropes are good making sure it's not too slippery. Pick my line, it's just like four-wheel drive and you go, you go walk the obstacle first. Let's go. Hi, Jeff. Wish me luck. Good luck. We're nearly there, Zeffy. We're nearly there. Yay! Yay! Your turn. That was, that was actually not as scary as I thought it was going to be. Not too bad. We'll keep on trucking. Never of 
nature's wonders. We gotta get up that one too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love how he says the last one's the worst one. Yeah, the drop. I just want as much worse. Oh Made it, guys. First time using the POV head cam. Wonder how the footage is gonna turn out. Do I look cool or what? Here's a very handy tip. We forgot a backpack, but draw bag, one of these chaos draw bags we got, and it works bloody excellent as a backpack. So we got our swimmers and other camera and change of clothes and all that stuff in there. And you said super comfy, didn't you? Yeah. So draw bags work a treat as backpacks. They nearly went down. This is a bit tight, Zef. It's literally like the tiniest load. Surely not. How am I supposed to do that? Mum's turn. Ah! Oh. If you want to swim, we haven't swum for a couple of days and we are feeling fairly dirty. So we're gonna brave the ice cold lift go waters in the middle of winter and have a swim. You got goosebumps. Oh, absolutely freezing already. Go for it. <laughs> Trying to get a towel. Trying to get a towel. Push and clean. Dad's going in now. When you get to this point, you start regretting it. Yeah. He's in, boys. You didn't even go all the way in. Get in. <laughs> Don't try it at home, boys. <laughs> This is a bit of a savage one. There's big pools and then you gotta make your way around the edge. A little log there to climb on, then up the edge of that waterfall. It's obviously just a bit more difficult with a baby on your back. Ready, Zeffy? Oh my god. Ah! It's so quick, yeah, yeah. Made it to the end. What star rating do you give it? I give it a seven out of ten. Seven. Only because the other three are missing because my I can't feel my feet. <laughs> I left my, my feet back in. 
<laughs> to the outside. How, how long has it been since we left the car? How many k's have we done? 2.75 kilometers. Yeah. What, an hour and 43 minutes. And that's the track up out of here. It's about 500 meters back up to the car. So you're sort of coming up three and a half k's by the time you've done it. Yeah. But yeah, that was it so back nice. down in there. So nice. So nice. Now we're back up into the hurricane wind conditions of Lithgow. We'll walk back up. Have some lunch and then come up with a plan. Am I gonna do a bit of four-wheel driving? I think we're talking about heading out of the Lost City or something. Yeah, do a little bit of driving. Zeph's asleep, so Demi's having a turn practicing on the tracks. Some manual. We try to come for a look at the lost city. I can barely stand from the wind, so we're just going to go again. I can't send the drone up, or really. Do anything here is that windy and cold, it's insane. But on a good day, this place is something special. We've retreated to hiding in the car while we have a little Snakes. bit of food. Snakes. 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 Here comes mum. On the way out of Lost City, you got Ranger Bob. We're gonna give that a crack now. Demi's driving, so she's still learning and practicing manual, especially out four-wheel driving. So we're not gonna pick the ridiculous lines, just like the medium ones. Nice job, mom. Nicely done. Mum's up, Zeph. And then try and bump it up. So while we spoke about like get the revs up and then drop the clutch. Mum did it! Yeah. <laughs> You're a maniac driver now. Drive. Refresh driver. I can't drive so I just have to move it. Is that fun? Smash it up. No, it's scary. <laughs> I think it's about 2.30 and we just popped back to our camp where we came out. At Ranger Bob's. It was only about a kilometre away so we're going to have some lunch here and then work out a plan for the afternoon. How's your first time driving manual on tough tracks going? It was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> We decided we're going to quickly pack the OP2 up here, it doesn't take too long. Go for a drive and find a camp somewhere else this afternoon. A little bit of a change of scenery and maybe drop down off the mountain a bit, see if we can get out of this wind. Ooh. Ooh. Hooked on, let's roll. Get to camp before dark. Yeah. Mission. 
Also, you might be thinking, hey, Tyler, your GQ's <laughs> a little bit sagged in the back. And yes, you would be right, it's not ideal. But I ordered some heavier duty springs for this exact reason, for towing the trailer on this trip. I don't have the GU at the moment, it's getting all new bar work done to it. So that's why, yeah, we didn't bring it. But we put the new springs in the day before we came and they're not heavy duty enough. So I'm gonna have to try an upgraded set again. These springs are three inch, 300 kilo plus or something, but I'm gonna have to go to like a four inch, 300 kilo or see if I can get a higher kilo in the three inch. You can in normal coils, but because I run long travel shocks, I use flexi coils to try and like hold through the length of that travel. And Dobinson do do flexi coils, but the highest I'm aware of they do is a 300 kilo one. And yeah, it didn't quite work out for me. So everyone will just have to deal with the fact that that's how it's sitting. Where we came out of Newton State Forest there was down through Black Fellows Hand Trail and there used to be a couple of nice camps at the bottom but they've gated all that area off. So we couldn't camp there, we just come out of that over the other side and into Ballbone Gap Trail and we just found ourselves a nice bit of bush out here but that's why it took us longer than we hoped to get to camp. So it is dark now but we'll get set up. So we're having a quick and easy 15 minute meal, which is spicy salmon teriyaki bowls. Got some rice cooking there, and then you're making up the salmon now. A third of a cup of teriyaki sauce. To start with, we got half a kilo of salmon, approx. Two tablespoons of tamari. One to two tablespoons of sriracha. We're gonna do one, because we'll be sharing with Zef. Now we coat the salmon. I just cook the salmon for six to eight minutes, or as I like to say, until it's dead. That's what I would like to say, until it's burnt to a crisp. That's the way I like it. The sauce should thicken up as it gets cooked as well. You can already tell this is going to be bloody beautiful. While that cooks, you prepare your vegetables. Broccolini and baby carrots. Dinner is served, looks bloody delicious. Thanks for dinner, Master Chef over there. We're gonna eat it in the OP2 with the diesel heater going, cause it's nice and warm in here and it's much easier with Zef. Beautiful morning in the bush out here. The wind does seem to have eased off a little bit overnight. You can definitely still hear it up there in the treetops, but not as bad. We're not getting blown away at camp or anything. Got the fire cranking there this morning. Demi and Zephyr are still asleep, but that'll keep me warm out here. Didn't use the fire pit because we weren't going to be cooking or anything on it anyway, and then we can get a bigger, warmer one going. If you watched a couple of recent videos where we engine swapped this GQ from 
the silver top that it had in it with 700,000 kilometers over to a factory turbo black top with only just over 200,000 kilometers on it. If you saw those couple of episodes, I talked about going to Cape York once that was all done, and that is where I'm meant to be right now. But turns out this motor we put in is an absolute piece of crap. <laughs> if you've seen this episode, the smoke coming out behind it, the white bluey smoke everywhere it goes, like it's just burning bulk oil. It has bad blow-by, even though we tested it, compression tested it, checked for blow-by, all that in the old car, once we sort of ran it in, it just seemed to fall to pieces. It must have just been all gunked up from sitting around for a few years. And it's got a fairly loud tap and knock as well, which all TDs knock and tap, but this one's, yeah, definitely stands out from the rest. So anyways, I didn't really want to risk going all the way up to Cape York in it. That's why we're just doing these trips that aren't as far away from home for the moment until we sort this out. So Demi, myself and Zephyr over the OP2 this week. Next week, Dad, myself and Kai going away again in it. And then I got the Sydney Four Wheel Drive show. And then after that, we should be able to fix it up. So hopefully it lasts me through these couple trips. But if something blows up catastrophically and at least I'm only a few hours from home, rather than 3,000 kilometers and four days drive up the other end of Australia, which would be a bloody disaster. So that's the story behind that, but I'll go through all that in more detail. And we have got a solution. I have got another engine sitting at home, ready to go in, which will be good this time. So keep an eye out for that episode coming up in the future. But I just thought I'd explain yeah, why I'm not in Cape York and why this thing's blowing so much blue smoke everywhere it goes. I tell you now, I was not that impressed at the time after we went to all that effort and then the new engine was just garbage. But yeah, I'm over it now. It's all part of the experience and the risk using secondhand motors and parts and everything. The other annoying thing about the situation is I could have taken the GU, but it's all in pieces down at Newcastle on the side fab getting complete new bar work across the whole thing. And it's there for a couple of months, so it was just kind of bad timing. All packed up, gonna head off. I will finish up that episode there though. That's about the halfway point of this trip. I'm gonna divide it into two. So today we're gonna head up Ballbone Gap and then over into Sunny Corner, maybe tour on river the next day. Keep exploring in the camper trailer for another two or three days. So we'll see everyone in the next episode. Better put this fire out before we go to grab some water. Bye. Boom, 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 boom. Middle of winter, out in the mountains. A little bit cold. Yay! Where's Dad? Boom, 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 boom. And these are three inch, 300 kilo constant, or these are three. Just a mum, photographer and videographer, girlfriend, all in one. Oh, <sighs>